What's going on? Happy Monday to everyone. Hopefully everyone is doing well, staying safe, healthy. If you had to take a COVID test, a flu test, RSV, maybe whooping cough, or some other test for a virus, I hope you have tested negative. If you did test positive, I hope you have a full and speedy recovery with no long-term issues, and of course, if it's COVID, no long COVID issues. It is time now for the Monday edition of the Virus Update for Monday, November 4th, 2024. If you're new to my channel, welcome to my channel. This is where I do the daily virus update on all those viruses that can make us sick. Let's face it, there's a lot of viruses out there. And since COVID started back in late 2019, early 2020, things have gotten kind of crazy. More viruses are spreading easier. You're going to hear about whooping cough in just a moment. There's a great example. Whooping cough cases have really gone up this year more than they normally have. A lot of things that shouldn't be happening have been happening since the COVID era. You need to be informed on all that, and you really need to be informed on what's going on with the latest COVID levels. Let's face it, you don't hear much about it, but I try my best to find whatever I can for in, for in, in terms of data, news, and anything I can find on COVID, and I bring this to you each and every day. So do you want to stay informed on COVID and other viruses? Subscribe to my channel down below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Hit that notification bell to be notified of my latest videos. Share this video with anyone you know. Maybe you know someone who is in denial and thinks, oh, these viruses aren't bad. COVID's not a thing anymore. Send them my way. Maybe they will actually learn something after seeing one of these videos. And maybe they'll become a regular follower. And of course, leave your comments down below. Alrighty, we have just a few news stories today. Then we're going to do some daily data, the weekly Walgreens update. We will touch on some more wastewater sites today, I think, because it's not that busy of a news day. We'll take a look at New Jersey, New York, and then I do have a message at the end of the video. Don't worry, it's nothing alarming. It's just something I have already said before. You know what day it is tomorrow in the United States. I have to tell you how to be safe for that. Alrighty, starting off in Michigan, where whooping cough is the issue. Michigan shows rise in whooping cough cases. Michigan Department of Health and Human Services is calling attention to an increase in cases of pertussis, commonly known as whooping cough. Get this, between 2017 and 2019, they averaged 596 cases of pertussis each year, according to the MDHHS. Now, you may think, hey, that's a lot of cases. That's concerning. Well, it gets a little bit more concerning. Let's read on. There have already been 830 confirmed or probable cases reported to the MDHHS this year. Yes, this is not good, and it's an ongoing theme in the United States. More and more states are reporting an increase in whooping cough cases, United States as a whole. I think last I saw was at 18,000. That number is likely higher by now. Uh, the UK, starting last year, started seeing increases. That may have started even sooner. Yes, pertussis, whooping cough. It really is an issue, and it's an issue that is getting worse, and we need to do something about it. We can't keep allowing cases to continue going up. And of course, if I see more states report on whooping cough, I will share them on future virus updates. Now, moving on to this, Spurs coach Greg Popovich sidelined indefinitely with undisclosed illness. And whatever it is, he's just not feeling well and didn't even travel with the team. So they had to bring in an interim coach, Mitch Johnson. That's going to be the guy who's going to take over until he feels better, and he was just, quote, not, he's not feeling well, that's what they're saying. Don't know what it is, don't know what any of the symptoms are, but he's not feeling well, and as you know, cases of illness, it's something we do report on here, and as the last, we'll say, two and a half, three weeks now, there have been many cases of illness. All right, I thought this was rather interesting. Louisiana, or New Orleans specifically, apparently is having a problem at their airport with TSA. A lot of the TSA workers are calling out sick. Take a look at this video from WDSU. Look at this here. Look at the lines here. Oh my. And you're not seeing many, you're not seeing any people mask. I don't see any person in a mask. And meanwhile, the lines for the TSA is because so many TSA workers have called out sick. 
Yikes, it's, that's a bad sign with the holidays just around the corner. Oh, but who could have expected this? That's probably going to be what they will say. All right, over in the UK, I'm concerned about this, and as I am in the United States as well, because I've been saying norovirus is rising in the United States. Well, apparently in the UK, it is seeing a big increase as well. Norovirus cases rise by 41% to twice the average level. Yes, and this has just happened within the past few weeks. The number of people testing positive for norovirus in the National Laboratory Reporting System jumped by 41% in the two weeks leading up to Sunday, October 20th. Remember, they say things backwards there. Sunday, 20th, October. It's really Sunday, October 20th is how we would say it here in the United States. But the point I'm trying to get across is they are also seeing a big increase in norovirus. And we'll take a look at some of that norovirus data here in the United States in wastewater. I'm pretty sure the UK ended wastewater. Is there any wastewater at all still there? I don't think there is. If, if there is, it's news to me. And Hey, let me know about it down below. I would like to show UK wastewater, but last time I tried to check, I wasn't seeing anything. All right, just a quick reminder, my website is datareport.info. I didn't do much posting there over the weekend. Matter of fact, I haven't posted anything since October 30th. I am still behind on some things, so maybe I will get to working on some of the archives here. Now's a good time when news is slow before the busy period does come around the holidays, and I'll probably be uh, doing some more work on this. But anywho, if you have a doctor's appointment coming up and you're having post-COVID complications, you had COVID in the summertime, and you kind of want to type out a letter for the doctor to read of just what's going on, and maybe you want to also include the fact that there's a study out there for whatever problem you're having. Maybe it's something with your lungs, heart, brain, diabetes, immune system, on and on, loss of taste and smell, on and on it can go. Well, you know what? This is a good place to start. You can just click on, let's just say, COVID's effect on the lungs, and you will see here various different studies of what COVID can do to the lungs. And you can also check on the effect of the brain. Maybe you have someone, an elderly person, who is in a care facility, or maybe they are living with you, and they had Alzheimer's, then they had COVID, and COVID made it worse. Well, guess what? You can actually go into here and find out that, yes, that is a thing. It can accelerate Alzheimer's. It can also increase the risk of Alzheimer's for those who are 65 and older or elderly ages. So, yes, once again, datareport.info, and there are so many other things you can also look at here. And there are a few other people that actually make posts on here as well. It's not just me. So, check that out, and it's free to become a member. All you have to do is click on register, just do a couple things here. It's so simple, and I will approve you as a member. All right, taking a look now at what's going on with air qualities across the United States. And we do see that there are a few problem spots, and I don't know if all of them are actually even going to show up. Okay, I stand corrected. One that I'm thinking of is showing up. There's a wildfire in South Jersey, and because of the wind directions, that wind has actually brought the wildfire smoke to Philadelphia. And I've been smelling smoke all afternoon if I go outside, and you can see it showing up here on air qualities, and that's not the only place that's dealing with wildfires. There's other areas that are dealing with um, issues as well. Take a look at this. There are some spotty areas of poor air quality in the Northeast. Those could be wildfires as well. I haven't heard anything. haven't really checked, to be honest with you, about Massachusetts and New Hampshire, but with how dry it is, it's possible. The West Coast still has bad air qualities, and there are some bad air qualities today where this uh, boundary is, this system that is ongoing across portions of the central states, because of the warm, moist air mixed in with that, it can cause some poor air qualities. Want to learn more about the climate and weather? You can do that over on my other X page, which is Climate Data Report, and my YouTube channel, which is also Climate Data Report. You can go check that out. I did just post a video on Raphael. Yes, it just got named within the last hour it is now a tropical storm and hey look at this we have passed 500 subscribers there i'm so happy about that let's see if we can try and get that to 
1,000. I, I just love uh, talking about the weather, so I'm going to be doing those videos pretty much every day here going forward. I don't know why I ever stopped doing it. I shouldn't have. All right. Taking a look at this, Philadelphia yesterday, 784 EMS incidents were reported. A live looking at the burbs is going to show something not so good right now. Yeah, matter of fact, it's actually got worse. Look how many respiratory calls. One, Montgomery County, one, two, three, four respiratory calls in Montgomery County right now. We're seeing in New Hanover Township, cardiac arrest. We're seeing in West Norton Township, stroke. We're seeing cardiac emergency several times. Yeah, not good. 15 calls in the 5 o'clock hour is never a good thing. And if you think it's any better in Chester County, it's not. There's quite a few calls there right now. It's not at 15, but it's also not good. We're seeing heart problems, sick person, sick person again, respiratory emergency, diabetic emergency, hypotension, a lot of falls, falls and lift assist. Looks like there's two heart problem calls. Not a good thing. We'll get a better update on Pennsylvania either tomorrow or Wednesday. Last week, wastewater in Pennsylvania was on Wednesday. Now let's take a look at the viral activity levels in Canada. COVID-19 is listed as low at this time. Flu A is low at this time. Flu B not detected and RSV is moderate at this time. Alrighty, taking a look at Walgreens. I have some good news from Walgreens. Let's zoom this in. Everybody likes good news, and the good news is the national positivity rate has continued to drop once again, and that is with testing down. This is the lowest positivity rate in a very long time from Walgreens. Nationally, COVID positivity rate is 14.1%. Prior week is 15.9%, down 1.8%. 4,190 tests versus 4,675, and you can see here, it has started dropping once again. It slowed off, but... It slowed off, then it dropped, and now it's trying to slow again, but hey, it's still dropping. It's not going up yet, which I kind of thought it may start going up, but hey, we will take the good news. Now taking a look at New Hampshire, where the positivity rate is 33.3%. The prior week was 22.2%. That's up by 11.1%. They do such tiny testing. 12 tests versus 9, so it went up by 3 for testing. Yeah, that would be a legitimate rise. Utah, the positivity rate is 22% versus 14.7%. That is up by 7.5%. Total test, 27 versus 34. Testing did drop there. Louisiana reports a positivity rate of 12.5% versus 7.7%. Difference of up 4.8%. Total test, 48 versus 52 at this time. Washington, the positivity rate is 10.4%. The prior week is 15.8%. That is down by 5.3%. Total test, 67 versus 57. Michigan reports a positivity rate from Walgreens for COVID at 17.6%. The prior week was 23%. That is actually down by 5.4%. Total test, 125 versus 126. Oklahoma, 18.8% positivity rate. The prior week was 9.1%. That's a difference of up 9.7%. Your testing is down 48 versus 77. And California, the positivity rate is 13.9%. The prior week is 14.1%. Difference of down 0.2%. Total test 137 versus 170. We'll take a look at some more Walgreens states again tomorrow because I do want to take a look at some wastewater data. And as promised, I want to show you some norovirus data in wastewater. First off, nationwide for COVID. Yeah, you're seeing a little bit of a rise here. I'm not terribly concerned just yet. I'm actually less concerned than I was a few weeks ago because, I mean, we're seeing Walgreens come down. We're just not seeing the big rise just yet, but it is eventually going to come probably within the next week or two. RSV. Overall, it is slowly rising. Influenza A, starting to rise a little bit faster now. That's concerning. But again, still very low. Influenza B is extremely low, despite this rise you see here. HMPV rising a little bit. Norovirus. You can see it here. It's continuing to see a big rise, and it is listed at high at this time. All right, let's take a look at some wastewater sites. Let's come down to Tallahassee, Florida, and see what's going on there. COVID is low at this time. Not really seeing much of a rise just yet. RSV 
overall was rising, and influenza A overall rising, still low for both of those at this time. Influenza B and HMPV, so low that I'm not even seeing it detected here. And norovirus is medium, and it is starting to rise once again, which is not good to see. Let's make our way further north. Let's go up to Michigan and see what's going on in Warren, Michigan. Remember they were seeing oh so high COVID levels? Look at this. They have dropped. They're still medium, but they have dropped once again. RSV, influenza A, influenza B, HMPV all low at this time, as is norovirus. Now let's make our way out to the west coast and we'll take a look. Let's see, where do we want to go here? Let's go down to San Diego, can we? Let's see what's going on with San Diego. Low levels for COVID, RSV, influenza A, influenza B, HMPV, all very low. But take a look at this. Norovirus is listed in the medium level and has rose a little bit at this time. And you know what? Let's make one more stop, shall we? I do want to check up on Harrison, Arkansas, because they've had a really high norovirus level. One of the highest levels in the entire country. It's not the first time this has happened, either. Take a look at this. COVID is still low at this time. Medium, actually, but you can see here, it's not rising. That's my point. And RSV is low, influenza A is low, influenza B is low, HMPV is low. Look at norovirus. Wow. Yeah. It is just really higher. It's similar to what we saw the last time we checked this out. Hepatitis A, not much of an issue here. Mpox, also no detections of that. Forgot to check those on the other wastewater sites, but you get the idea. It is not doing bad there at this time for those viruses. It is norovirus that is the most concerning for that site. All right, let's take a look at what is going on in New Jersey for COVID today. And we can see New Jersey. Huh, look at that. They did not report it, saying zero out of 70 hospitals reporting let's refresh that again because that's what it has been saying and something tells me they did update today okay nothing if anyone knows what's going on with new jersey why they stopped reporting right when the mandate started please let me know down below are they switching over to a new dashboard what's going on new york state is all good news today 451 people tested positive. Of course, it's not good that anybody tested positive, but their levels continue to drop at this time. New York State for hospitalizations, 519 people in the hospital, 62 people in the ICU. They will start the new week tomorrow. Very interested to see how that goes. But hey, they have been still dropping at this time, which is some fantastic news. All right, a final message before we end today's update. And that is, tomorrow is Election Day in the United States. If you have not voted yet, and you are in voting in person tomorrow for Election Day, please put on a mask when you go. Simple as that. And if someone tries to, you know, say something, oh, this person's wearing a mask, they must be Democrat or whatever, just ignore. Just ignore mask harassment. Okay? It's about being safe. If they don't want to be safe, well, guess what? That's on them. And if they go on to suffer the consequences of COVID and then long COVID, uh, they were warned, or, well, they were warned by me that this virus is still bad. Did they choose to tune into my video? Probably not. And they were probably told nothing on the news because they're not informing you of half the stuff that's going on right now. They're not telling you that COVID still exists. Long COVID is such a bad thing. Once in a rare while, you get 30 seconds worth of it. My point is, if you have to vote in person tomorrow, please do so safely. Try and avoid catching a case of COVID or any other illness on Election Day. Consider masking up when you go to vote tomorrow. And if you can vote early, do so. Uh, maybe like mid-morning would be a good time. I know first thing in the morning, probably not so good. People are going to be voting before work. And in the evening, lines will probably get long. People coming out of work. So maybe try and get creative. Think of times in between where we'd be less busy. I know this is such a huge election. But uh, try and think of times that are less busy. And just be safe. I will see you all again tomorrow. Until I see you again tomorrow. If you're new to my channel, subscribe down below. Give this a thumbs up. Hit that notification bell. Share this video with anyone you know. And of course, leave your comments down below. Thanks for watching, everyone. And have a fantastic Monday evening. See you all again tomorrow. Bye-bye.